Hello, my name is Lingdan. In this video, I am talking to you about the book Cullen and the Leprechaun, written by Ellen Forrest, illustrated by David Cockcroft. Colleen goes to Ireland. Colleen was so excited. She had never been to Ireland before. She had never ever been on an airplane. Now she was here, landing in Dublin, Ireland's capital city. Colleen and her parents were visiting her grandparents. She had never met them in person. She had only talked to them on the phone and seen them in family pictures. As Colleen walked out of the airport, two strangers grabbed her and started hugging her. After a few seconds, she realized they were her grandparents. Colleen watched out the car window as the family drove by some field. Her grandpa said mysteriously, Colleen, be sure to keep an eye out for little people. Little people? Question Colleen, who are the little people? The little people are fairies, said Grandma as she drove. Tales of fairies go back to Celtic time in Ireland and Scotland. We have many legends and stories that tell about fairies and the world. Yes, we do, said Grandpa. There are many kinds of fairies. A leprechaun is one kind. He looks like a small old man. He's not friendly, lives alone, and spends most of his time making shoes. Colleen had heard about leprechauns before. One of the great things about leprechauns, continued Grandma, is that each one gives a pot of gold. If you find a leprechaun, don't take your eyes off him, Grandpa warned. Legend says that if you keep your eyes on him, the leprechaun will have to take you to his shadows, Grandma continued. A long, long time ago, Grandpa said, a man named Jack Foss found out that leprechauns could be cheeky fellows. Tell me about Jack Fox, said Colleen. Grandpa began to tell the story. Jack Fox, Jack Fox and Leprechaun. Jack Fox was walking along the road when he heard a sound in a head grow. He had a suspicion about what that noise might be and started to be very excited. He peeked over the hedge and saw a suspicious was shoe. There was a little man wearing a leather apron and a pointed hand. He was using a teeny hammer the size of a pin to shape the tiny golden shoes. Jake knew at once that he had found a leprechaun. Jack crept close to the leprechaun and said good morning to him. The leprechaun slime said hello and offered Jack a drink of water. Just hand me the bottle, the leprechaun said, hoping Jack would look away. But Jack just stared straight at the leprechaun and said, "No, thank you." They talked for a while. The leprechaun tried many ways to trick Jack into looking away, but Jack wasn't fooled. Jack demanded the leprechaun take him to a pot of gold. Finally, the leprechaun gave up trying to trick Jack and took him to a field of dandelions. He showed Jack the flower that the cheddars was buried under, but Jack did not have a showers. Jack used one of his saw to cover the dent line and mark the spot. Then Jack went home to get a shovel. When Jack came back, every dent line in the field had a shock on it. He never didn't find the shock that marked the buried part of gold. Jack carried the shocks home and told his wife what happened. She said that at least he would not need new saws for a while. Then they both started laughing.
Clement's parents started laughing too. Imagine food full of socks! Exclaimed Colleen. What a funny story! Colleen could see that she was going to like learning about iron from her grandparents. This was be a great visit. The end. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.